A cell is an area where a mobile station, MS, receives signal strength, which is high enough to set up a radio connection on a dedicated channel, that is, the SDCCH or TCH, and maintain it. A second cell criterion is the existence of a BCCH. A cell must have exactly one BCCH due to the fact that BCCH carries essential information, which must be known to the MS, before call setup. The ABIS interface is responsible for transmitting traffic and signaling information between the BSC and the BTS. The ABIS interface uses PCM transmission technique on the physical layer to interconnect the BSC and the BTS, RBS. E1 and T1 link connections are supported. E1 is a 32 channels time slots PCM line defined in the ITU-T specifications. T1 is a 24 channels PCM line defined in ANSI specifications. The transmission protocol used for sending signaling information on the ABIS interface is the link access protocol on the D channel. The ABIS interface facilitates the transfer of voice and signaling information between the BSC and the BTS. Speech is coded by the TRAU in the TRC or BSC TRC. The RBS 2000 hardware architecture is composed of many replaceable units, RUs, such as DXU, DTRU, CDU, CXU, and PSU. A circular shaped cell is called an omnidirectional cell. In general, the cell shape depends on the antenna that is connected to the cell. Some antennas can also focus their power on a certain sector in the circle. This is called a sector cell. It is up to the cell planner to select a suitable antenna. The cell shape may also depend on the geographical conditions. Each sector can have its own output power assigned. The radius of a cell varies from meters up to 35 kilometers. The extended range feature makes it possible to extend the radius of a cell up to a theoretical limit of 121 kilometers. The gain in cell radius is done at the expense of capacity in the cell. This extended range feature is suitable to use in sparsely populated area with low transmission loss, such as coastal areas, deserts, or remote constructions, for example, oil rigs. The distribution switch unit, DXU, serves as the central main CPU node. There is one DXU per RBS. DXU provides the RBS with an interface to the transport network through four fixed E1, T1 transmission ports. It handles incoming traffic, controls, and supervises information and sends it to its destination within the RBS. DXU provides frequency reference signals and timing signals for circuits within the RBS. It stores and executes RBS software, stored on a removable flashcard. The DXU also controls the climate and power system. The double transceiver unit, DTRU, is a 2TRX replaceable unit. A TRX is a transmitter, receiver, and signal processing unit, which transmits and receives one carrier. There are different versions of DTRU depending on the frequency band and modulation capability. The DTRU has two TX antenna terminals and four RX antenna terminals. 
The DTRU features a built-in hybrid combiner. Two of the RX antenna terminals are used for two-branch diversity reception. The DTRU is hardware prepared for four-branch diversity reception through the remaining two antenna terminals. The Combiner Distribution Unit, CDU, enables connection of two TX signals to two antennas. The TX signal can be two combined signals or two uncombined signals. A CDU-G has no combining circuits. The combining takes place outside the CDU. It provides simultaneous transmission and reception on each antenna. CDU amplifies two RX signals from two antennas for further distribution in the configuration switch unit, CXU. The power supply unit, PSU, AC and DC communicate with the DXU, handles alarms, adjusts voltage, and provides power limitation. The connection switch unit, CXU, cross-connects the CDU and the DTRU in the RX path. The CXU makes it possible to expand or reconfigure a cabinet with a minimum of moving or replacing of RX cables. The CXU is used in the RBS 2X06 only and is a multiband product for GSM 800, GSM 900, GSM 1800, and GSM 1900. The function of CXU is to support both GMSK and 8PSK. One CXU can support up to three CDUs. A cell is never found in isolation. A cluster of cells make a network. To prevent interference between cells, a cell pattern called a cluster is designed. The aim of the cluster is to have a large frequency reuse distance. Ericsson uses three types of clusters as shown here. The aim of the cell planning process is to provide maximum capacity with least interference. The cell pattern and frequency plan should be designed not only for the initial network but also for gradual growth phases. An initial network must be planned to adapt successive demands on traffic growth. To prevent interference between cells, a cell pattern called a cluster is designed. In this cluster, a frequency is used only once. If a 412 cluster, 12 frequency groups in four sites, is used for cell planning, the number of cells consisting of different channel numbers in the network is 12. To enable allocation of channels to cells without co-channel interference, a reuse pattern is utilized. These frequency groups are then placed in the cluster. Groups containing adjacent frequencies, for example, D1 and A2, or D3 and A1, should not be placed as neighboring cells. As a general rule, adjacent frequencies should have large geographical distances. Cells, which are geographical neighbors, should have a large frequency distance. A powered-on circuit switched CS mobile station MS that does not have a dedicated channel allocated is defined as being in idle mode. While in idle mode, it is important that the mobile is both able to access and be reached by the system. When a mobile is powered on, it immediately attempts to make contact with the GSM Public Land Mobile Network (PLMN). The particular PLMN contacted may be selected either automatically or manually. The MS will look for and select a suitable cell of the chosen PLMN. It will then tune to the control channel of the cell to receive information about the available services provided by the PLMN. This selection is known as camping on a cell.
When an MS is in idle mode, it will always try to camp on the best cell, according to a signal strength-based criterion. The idle mode behavior is managed by the MS. It can be controlled by parameters which the MS receives from the base station on the Broadcast Channel Control Channel, BCCH. All of the main controlling parameters for idle mode behavior are transmitted on the BCCH carrier in each cell. These parameters can be controlled on a per cell basis. Moreover, to be able to access the system from anywhere in the network, regardless of where the MS was powered on or off, it has to be able to select a specific GSM base station, tune to its frequency, and listen to the system information messages transmitted in that cell. It must also be able to register its current location to the network, so that the network knows where to route incoming calls. The PLMN selection mechanism, the cell selection and reselection algorithms, in addition to the location updating procedure, are the core of the idle mode behavior. The purpose is always to ensure that the mobile is camped on the cell where it has the highest probability of successful communication. While the MS is in idle mode, it will continuously make measurements on the BCCH carriers of serving and neighboring cells to decide on which cell to camp on. The MS also listens to the paging information that is broadcasted in the location area. LAPD concentration is recommended for all cells, but in particular, for those with three TRUs or more. With LAPD concentration, each TRU needs two 25 PCM time slots. It is, thus, possible to fit up to 13 TRUs on one 2 megabits per second PCM line, as compared to 10 TRUs without this feature. For cells with 1 to 2 TRUs per cell, LAPD multiplexing provides the most efficient ABIS transmission. We will now learn about the PLMN and cell selection processes. The MS selects a PLMN when it is powered on or upon recovery from a lack of coverage. It first tries to select and register to the last registered PLMN, if one exists. If a registration on a PLMN is successful, the MS shows this PLMN on its display, the registered PLMN, and it is now capable of making and receiving calls. The MS normally operates on its home PLMN. Another PLMN may be selected if, for example, the MS loses coverage. The MS will register on a PLMN if the MS finds a suitable cell to camp on and if a location updating request is accepted. Registration has to be successful in order for the MS to be able to access that network. The cell selection algorithm tries to find the most suitable cell of the selected PLMN according to various requirements. If no suitable cell is found and all available and permitted PLMNs have been tried, the MS tries to camp on a cell irrespective of PLMN identity and enter a limited service state. In this state, the MS is able to make emergency calls only. If the MS loses coverage, it returns to the PLMN selection state and select another PLMN. Let's look at the cell selection criterion. While in idle mode, the MS continuously calculates the cell selection quantity in C1. The name of this quantity in the GSM technical specifications is Path Loss Criterion Parameter. The cell selection criterion is satisfied if C1 is greater than zero. The transceiver handler, TRH, performs the activities required to control the RBS and the transceivers, 
and is responsible for a multitude of functions, including handling of signaling on the link access protocol on D channel, LAPD link, between BSC, BTS, handling of logical channel addressing, part of signaling to or from BTS and mobile stations, and processing of measurement data from BTS and MS. After a cell has been successfully selected, the MS will start the cell reselection tasks. It will continuously make measurements on its current serving cell and neighboring cells in order to initiate cell reselection if necessary. The MS continuously monitors all neighboring BCCH carriers, as indicated by the BA list, in addition to the BCCH carrier of the serving cell, to detect if it is more suitable to camp on another cell. At least five received signal level measurement samples are required for each defined neighboring cell. A running average of the received signal level will be maintained for each carrier in the BA list. In order to control the traffic distribution between cells, Ericsson GSM system allows the operator to favor certain cells in dedicated mode. For these purposes, additional cell reselection parameters are broadcasted on the BCCH of each cell. The air interface uses the time division multiple access TDMA technique to transmit and receive traffic and signaling information between the BTS and MS. The TDMA technique is used to divide each carrier into eight time slots. These time slots are then assigned to specific users, allowing up to eight conversations to be handled simultaneously by the same carrier.